Today, we're gonna be designing a low poly island in Blender. I've created a bunch of low poly products. I've created a bunch of low poly masterpieces before. So I'm really excited to show you some tips and tricks on how you can do this too. In this class, we'll be using Blender 3.4, which is free to download. You're more than welcome to follow along with me or create your own masterpiece in low poly style. Let's jump straight into Blender. All right, so here we are in Blender and this is what it should be looking like for you. So we have this light just here and we're just gonna delete it and we're just gonna delete this camera as well. If you don't know what I'm doing or you don't understand what I'm doing, you can just see down the bottom what keys I am clicking. The only thing is sometimes when I click option, it might actually be alt for you depending on what type of keyboard you have. So if it's not working and you're using option, try alt. And that's just my only tip for that at the moment. Now we're gonna be starting with the starting cube to create this low poly island. I'm gonna go G and then we're gonna scale it down on the Z just like that. You can go over to front view as well to view it or to scale it if you want to. Now you can really make this island have you want. You could start with a circle or you could start with a cylinder to make it rounded but we're going to be doing square today and maybe in the future we will do a circle as well. So the first thing we're going to do is tab into edit mode and we are going to make some loop cuts. To make a loop cut you go Control R and you see that little yellow bit turn up there and then you just need to make two clicks to select it. You can also go Control R and you can scroll up and down your wheel to make as many loop cuts as you want. So we probably actually just want the one in the middle and then the one here as well, just like that. I'm gonna select these two vertices. I'm gonna go X and I'm gonna delete the vertices. Now I'm gonna select this vertice, this one, this one, and this one, and press F. And that'll fill in those vertices there. So I'm just gonna do that on the bottom as well. F, and now you can see it looks like this. And we're actually going to be putting the water here. So that's why it is looking like that. So I'm going to go face select. I'm going to go shift D to duplicate and P to separate it from the selection. So now you can't actually select it properly. So we're going to go out into object mode, pick up what we just made and then tab into edit mode. You can go A to select all. I'm going to just press one. Actually, I'm just going to press three. I'm going to extrude it along the Z just like that. And I'm just going to make it a little bit lower than where my sandbar is gonna be. All right, I'm quite happy with that. All right, so that's what that is looking like. We'll go into the water. We'll go A to select all, and we're gonna right click and we are going to subdivide. Now down the bottom left hand side, you can click how many times you want to subdivide. I think I'm gonna go with five times. And then I'm gonna click, press A to select all, and go Control T, just like that. So now we have turned them all into triangles, which is exactly what we're after. We're going to go into vertices select, or you can press one as well, or you can select it up the top here. I'm gonna select a couple vertices. Now you could individually drag them and pull them to give them a water texture, or you can go over here to proportional editing, and you can click that, turn it on, and we're going to go to random. Now you go there, and we're gonna go G, and you can see the circle has appeared on the screen. To make it bigger or smaller, you just need to scroll with your mouse wheel. If you can't see it, scroll in. And if you scroll in all the way and you still can't see it, scroll out. But he will be there somewhere. So I'm just gonna scroll in. I'm just gonna pick up some of these vertices. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a play with them. They don't need to be perfect. It's all low poly. So I'm just like picking up and putting them around like that. And I don't mind if they overhang. I think it adds a little bit of character to it. And putting on the random as well makes it really cool because it means they're not all gonna end up being like the same height or width or anything like that. So you can play with this however you want, but this is my biggest tip for doing the water in the low poly. I'm just going to turn it off and I'm just gonna bring in these vertices just a little bit and maybe just that one, just there. So that is what the water is looking like and already you can see that low poly look there. Now we're just gonna do a low poly look to the sand. So we're going to select all of them by pressing A, right click, subdivide, and we're probably gonna subdivide it about five times as well. Then we are going to go Control T, and now they are all triangles. We're going to turn back on proportional editing, make sure it's still on random, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna go G and we're just gonna move them around. I'm not going to move them on exact vertices or anything like that. I'm just gonna kind of have a big play with whatever I want them to look like. And I do want it to come out the sides a little bit as well. I do think it adds a lot of character to this type of design. So we're just gonna pull them out just like that. 
be a little better. Yeah, I think that is looking really, really, really cool. Just like that. And you can tab out and now you can see all of these different low poly looks. And I'm really happy with the, how this is looking. And we can also fix up these little bits at the end. So no need to worry about them right now. Or you can go in or to fix them, you can just go in and you can press Alt Z or Option Z and just find the vertice that's affecting and just bring it in a little bit. Just like that. So we've got the sand and we have the water. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do some palm trees. So I'm gonna go shift A and I'm gonna add in a plane and I'm gonna click slash to go into an isolation mode. I'm gonna go G and then scale it down. I'm gonna go press seven. So we're looking from the top and I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm then gonna scale it along the X. So we're about there and I'm gonna go control R Add in three loop cuts by just scrolling up on your mouse wheel and then clicking. We're just gonna do a cut in the middle and then we're gonna go merge at center and we're gonna merge that one at the center as well. So that's looking very good. We're gonna go here to edge select or press two and we're just going to hold down option or alt and we are just going to turn on proportional editing to smooth, go G and then Z and we're just going to pull it up just like that. That's kind of what we are looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to go control R. We're going to add in a loop cut there and a loop cut there. We're going to select save that vertice and we're going to go V and it's going to separate. So you can actually separate them like that to make them look a little bit more like a leaf. So just adding in a little bit like that. So you can do this however you want. You can add in as many cuts as you want as well whatever you are wanting. So I'm just gonna go around and do this. So we have something that looks just like this. I might select all by going A and then select E and then go down just like that so that we have this beautiful low poly leaf. If we tab back out into object mode, you'll be able to see what it is looking like and I quite like that. I do think I want it to be a little bit rounded so I might select those vertices all in the center just like that, turn on proportional editing Go G and then just turn it up a little bit just so it's a little bit rounded. And if I go into side view, you can see how rounded that's actually become. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit and we'll tab it back out. So I'm gonna select one, I'm gonna pull it down and then I'm going to pull it here and we're actually gonna change the origin point. So to do that, go up to object, go to set origin and origin to 3D cursor, which is just here. So this is exactly where we want it. Now we're gonna go Control A and we're going to apply all transformations and rotation and scale. We're then going to add in a curve. The curve we want is this circle. We're gonna select this leaf. We're gonna go up to array modifier, turn off relative offset, turn on object offset and select that circle. We want maybe five leaves and we're gonna go over here to object properties and in the Z rotation, we're gonna go 360 divided by five, just like that, and you should have it like this. If you find your leaves are everywhere and they're big and they're small, you haven't applied the rotation and scale, so you just need to go Control A to apply those just there. And that's my biggest tip for how I do this. This is how I also do plants and flowers and all that type of thing, but yeah, this is my best technique and I love doing this. What you wanna do as well, if you want to add some variation, is you can change the rotation of the Y, you can change the rotation of the X, just like that. So whatever you're after, I might just leave mine like this for now and then change it a little bit later. What I'm gonna do is apply the array modifier, delete the circle, select these little palms, shift D to duplicate, rotate, and then pull them up and scale them. So it should just be like that, just like that. So now you have a little bit more dimension to your palm tree. We're gonna select all of them press slash because we are in isolation mode and now you'll see your island has popped up so we just need to scale this little tree top and then we're just going to move it to the side just to the back and i'm just going to place it i'm thinking i might want them a little bit bigger i think that's a great size there so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to get my cursor i'm just going to put it on the ground and then i'm going to go back to my selection box I'm gonna go, I'm gonna add in a cylinder and I'm just gonna make it about 16 vertices. And then I'm gonna scale all the way down, just like that. And then I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna go one so we can actually see what we're doing. And it should be something like that. Now I'm just going to put the tree, I'm just gonna put it in the center, just like that. So now I'm gonna tab into edit mode for this guy. We're just gonna select the vertices in the top of it. 
and we're just gonna scale them down just like that maybe even just like that and i'm gonna go out of x-ray mode so then what we're going to do is go Control r and we're gonna add in a bunch of loop cuts just like that and then we're going to go to just select these loops just here so if you just hold if you just hold option or alt with shift you'll be able to select more than one group just like that we're going to go Control b and we're just going to bevel them like this and then we're going to go back down there so we're just going to go down we're going to select the vertices in the top part just here we're going to hit period on our keyboard make sure it's on individual objects and then we're just going to scale it like this now i forgot to select the bottom one so i'm just going to go into slash mode and then also just select that one as well just so when we scale them just like that perfect Press period on your keyboard again and go back to the median point so you don't forget to do that. I'm really happy with how that is looking and I might even just lift it up a little bit. Tab back into edit mode. I'm going to press slash on my keyboard and I'm just going to press face select. I'm going to go in and press I and then I'm going to press 1 and extrude it down just a little bit like this. Now it's looking a little bit better I think. So that is one of the trees and we want to do another little tree as well. So I'm just going to go shift D and then I'm going to scale it and I'm just going to place it. What you can do is you can also rotate the trees a little bit or you can even go in and you can select some of these vertices by going into x-ray mode. So say we want these vertices and you can turn on proportional editing and you can pull it a little bit so that it is a little bit on a lean. And then I'm just gonna rotate this around, bring it forward like that, and then just also rotate just like that. Perfect, so you can play around with how you want them to look. Obviously palm trees aren't straight up and down, so you can definitely do whatever you want with them. I'm gonna place all my palm trees around and I will see you when we get back. All right, so this is what my little trees are looking like. And I also had this one here that I duplicated just in case I messed any of them up. But I'm quite happy with how they turned out. I'm very excited to see what you've done with your little trees. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a tent. So we're gonna go Shift A and we're gonna add in a cube and we're going to scale it down. We're gonna go into slash mode so that it's isolated and then we're gonna scale it along the Y, just about there. And maybe even scale it down just a little bit. We're gonna tab into edit mode. So here is our little tent. We're gonna go Control R, just like that. We're gonna select these vertices on each side. We're gonna go G, we're gonna go G and pull them down just like that. And as you can see, the tent comes together very quickly. We're gonna go Control R and we're gonna add in a loop cut here. And then we're also gonna do that on the other side. I'm gonna go into face select, select those two faces and delete those faces just like that. So I'm going to do another three loop cuts just like that, add in a little bit more vertices. And then I'm going to go in and I'm just gonna select these little guys and I'm just gonna move them a little bit, just like that. Just something that maybe looks really low poly, looks real in a low poly world, something like that. And you can fiddle around with that however you like. We're gonna add in some more loop cuts. So we're gonna add in three here. We're gonna add in two here, two on the other side. And then we're gonna add in three in the middle. We're gonna select that middle vertice, turn on proportional editing, and we're just gonna move it down just a little bit. You see how it's curved it just like that. You can select those vertices, and then you can just also move them in if you want to. And then you can also go around and pull out some of the other vertices. I'm gonna select all and go Control T, and then we have all of those triangles just there. I'm gonna go back to the vertice select with the randomized proportional editing on. I'm just going to move everything just a little bit. You can do this however you like. There's no right or wrong answer here. Just like that. So that is our little low poly tent. And I think he looks really, really, really cool. So we're going to go out of slash mode and we're just going to bring him up to the beach. Maybe even rotate him just a little bit, scale him up and select one to make sure he's not fully in the sand. And what we might even do is just make another little one. So you spent all this time making the tent, we might as well clutter a little bit with the tent. So maybe a big tent, and then maybe a little tent, just like that. So I'm quite happy with how those two little tents have turned out. All right, so I think we now go in and make the little dock. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go in with a cube again. 
scale it all the way down and we're just going to go into the isolation mode again just because it's easier for us to work in. We're going to scale it down and then we're going to scale it out across the Y, something like that. We're going to go into edit mode and we're going to subdivide this about five times just like that and then we're going to go control T and we're going to turn it into triangles once again. I love using this technique. It's so easy to just get that low poly look while doing this. So then I'm just gonna select them with proportional editing on with the random on as well. And we're just gonna go around and we're just gonna make this dock just look a little bit of more low poly. You could give it a wood look if you wanted to. Um, that's not really the vibe I'm going for. So I just wanted to maybe just look a little bit crazy. A little bit crazy and low poly. Really make those triangles stand out. I'm gonna go out and have a look and I really like that. I think that's really cool. I'm gonna go shift A again, make a little cube, make it small, then pull it out along the X, pull that down along the Y, and then we're gonna actually scale that. So this is going to be the little poles that hold the dock into place. We're going to tab into edit mode. I might even just make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, just like that. We're going to subdivide it about, I reckon we subdivide it two times and then go control T, make it into triangles and then just do the same technique, pulling all those little vertices around just like that. You can do this however you want and it's quite fun. It's a little bit of messy design. Now I want to duplicate this on each point. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the array modifier and we're going to pull it along the Y. So just here on the right hand side you can see and you can see me moving it up and down and then I can see where I want it. Now we also want it on the other side. You can actually array it again and now we're going to do it along the X just like that. And if you wanted to you could add in a third one and I'm just going to pull it in just a little bit more and then I might just go back into here and I see that there's not a lot of vertices hanging out with this guy. So I might just pull them just a little bit over. Just make sure everyone else looks legit. Just like that. So I'm really happy with how that dock is looking. What we could also do is we could duplicate this dock, scale it along the X, pull it out along the X, scale it a little bit more, maybe along the Z, pull it up and scale it a little more along the X, just like that. And then we can do a little railing. So we could have a couple little rails on each side. So we could add the array modifier above. And if we just do three, we'll be able to just see where it's going. Maybe something like that. And then we'll do the array modifier and we'll actually put it on the other side. Something that looks like it makes sense. Just like that. So now it's a beautiful little dock. We're gonna select the whole thing, come out of slash mode, press G, and we're gonna actually move it up. Move it along the Y. I want to scale it quite a bit and we can play around with the water as well if the water is clipping. I don't want it to be straight in the middle. I kind of want it to be maybe like over off to the left hand side just there. And then I'm just going to pull it back off the Y. I really really like how this whole scene is looking. I love that they could go camping and they can like jump out on the little pier and like go fishing. I think this is absolutely looking amazing. And what we might do is add in some little rocks. So go shift A and we want to add in an icosphere and we want to give it one subdivision. So it just looks like that. We can scale it down and we can actually just move it into the scene straight away if you want to do it just so you can see what it's looking like. These are going to be rocks. I'm just going to put it in the sand a little bit just there. I'm going to tab, tab into edit mode, select one of the vertices, make sure proportional editing is on with the random, and then I'm just going to pull it around like that, and maybe even pull this one out, just like that, that top one is a little crazy. And then that creates little rocks. Now this top one is still crazy, so I'm just going to pull them down a little bit, it's a little bit too much, but this is what our little rocks are looking like. I think it's just shift them around. I'm going to use Alt D or Option D to just move them so that the same textures apply to them when we move them. So I'm just going to play around with them a little bit and then I might also pull them onto the other side. I might even put some in the camp actually. Maybe they have a little campfire going. We could use these maybe as like little seats. Just like scale it down like that a little bit. Maybe we rotate it pull them up and then just duplicate it for the other side and we might actually make a little campfire. These little rocks here I think are going to be like the little seats you sit on for the campfire. So to make the campfire what we're going to do is go shift A and we're going to add in a icosphere. Make sure it's on one subdivision, go into slash mode, 
scale it down. Go to 7, bring it back along the Y just like that. We want to go into edit mode and we just want it to look a little bit crazy. However you want it to look is perfectly fine to me. Great. We're going to go control A and apply all transformations and rotation and scale. I'm just going to bring it back and then do that again. We're going to go shift A and we're going to add in a curve, which is a circle. So this is exactly the same technique that we did for the palm trees. So for the little rock, we're going to add in the array modifier and we're going to go into object offset just like that. And I think we're probably looking at about seven and then we're going to go over here to rotation 360 divided by seven. They are very cute like that. Maybe we even do eight. 360 divided by eight. Just like that. Just so it's a little fire pit. And I'm actually really, really happy with how that turned out. I'm going to apply the array modifier. If you wanted to go in and you want to make all the little rocks a little bit different, you can just go in with the array modifier and just pull them around. And just make them a little bit different. You don't have to do this. You can really do whatever you want. Just like that. Now I'm going to delete the circle, we don't need it anymore, and then I'm going to go out of slash mode. I'm going to bring it up, scale it down, and we're going to place it just there, just like that. I'm quite happy with what that is looking like. So that is the basic scene for this. You can add whatever you want, any elements, if you want them to be staying in a lodge on the river, or you want them to be fishing, you want to create characters, you want to do different trees, you want to do fish, you want to do starfish, whatever you want to do, please do it. I'd love to see. But this is just the basics of lots of different techniques you can do and how you can get lots of different effects, like with the palm trees and the fire pit and also the tent and all that type of thing. What we're going to do now is we're going to go in and start texturizing everything and give it those colors. All right, let's start texturizing. So we're going to be rendering an Eevee. So we're just going to go over here and we're going to turn on a couple of settings. So we want ambient inclusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And then we're going to turn on refractions just there. That is going to really help us when we do the water. We're going to go over here and we're going to go just into viewport shading. If you're just in this one, you're not going to see any of the colors. So we're just going to go here. So we're just going to go in the water, add in a new material, call it water. And I'm just going to add in a nice blue for that one. Just like that. We're going to go down and we're going to change a couple more settings. We're going to go down to transmission. We're going to turn it up to one. And then we're going to turn the IOR to 1.333, which is the IOR of water. And then your water should be looking like this. Once we put in the lights and start rendering, It'll look a lot better as well, but this is what we have so far. We're going to do the sand. So we're going to go in and call it sand. And what we can also do is we can actually go into the shaders tab and we can add in a little bit more texture to the sand. So we can go in and add a color ramp and we can add a Voronoi texture. Put the distance into the factor and the color into the base color, just like that. We're going to add in a couple of different variations of yellow. So one may be like bright yellow, one may be like orange like a different tone so you can just see the different colors there and we're going to increase we're just going to increase the scale by about 500 as you can see i don't really like this color so i might just make it a little bit lighter a little bit more yellow so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a color ramp and then we're going to add in a noise texture put the factor into the factor the color into the color you will see these dots turn up we're going to do one of these colors as yellow and then the other color is another off-brand yellow as well. So you can just see the slight variation color just there. We're going to increase the scale. Might even just change this color up a little bit. Increase the scale. We probably want to go to 150, maybe even 200. And we're just going to increase the detail and then just distort it just a little bit. Might even take this to 250. So now it looks a little bit more like sand. And you can even make this a little bit more orangey. You're thinking it's not looking sandy enough. Yeah, it's like that. We're going to go in and do the wood texture as well. So we'll go in and call this wood. We're going to add in a color ramp. Then we're going to add in a noise texture, very similar to what we did with the sand, and then plug those in. We're going to add in a couple different browns. So maybe that color. Oh yeah. We're going to increase the scale not too much and then just distort just a little bit. Might even pull that scale down. So you can see the distortion. We'll go here and we'll add the wood to the base as well. And there we can see the distortion. It might just be just a little too much. Definitely want to add a little bit more detail. I want it to be a little bit more rough. I'm thinking that. And then we'll add the wood to that one. So then we have a little dog just there. Now for the stones, I'm just going to add in another texture. Just call it stone. And then just add some gray in. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn up the roughness of them. And then I'm going to add in a second stone color. Turn up the roughness of that. And then this stone color should be even darker because it's right on the light the fire just there. I might actually make this this stone color. But I quite like that. That looks really cool. We're going to go in and add the tent colors. My tent is blue and green. So I think we might go with those. Might go with a green. This is like my favorite green to use. And I'll just turn up the roughness just like that. And then maybe this other little tent, maybe she's just a little bit more blue. Just like that. Oh, I'm quite happy with how they are looking. They're looking very, very, very cute. We'll go in and do the trunk. And we can either just leave this as a brown color, just like that. Or we can add in a, just a little bit more color to it by doing a color ramp and then the noise texture. And then I'm just going to go around and add it to all of these little trees. And I might even use some of the wood from down there as well. So there's just a couple little variations. I'm gonna go in and add the green to the leaves. Not too much, I wanna turn up that roughness as well. Call this green one, quite like this one. And then I'll add in another little green and make these leaves maybe just a little bit darker. Not too much that it looks funny, but just like that. And then we'll just go around and play with those two different greens, just like this. And this is your basic little scene all done up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go on to the lighting and then we are going to render this. Alright, so to start the lighting, what we're going to do first is we're going to add in our camera. Click zero on your numpad so that you can go into the camera, go to view and then go camera to view. Zoom out and then just kind of get the angle that you're after. I'm kind of looking for something like that. Go shift A and we want to add in a plane. I'm just going to bring it down quite a lot and then I'm going to rotate it, scale it tab into edit mode, go and select this edge here, extrude it up, get this, control B, and then shade that smooth, just like that. I'm going to go in and add in a sun, because there would definitely be a sun here, and I'm just going to pull it probably just about here. I want it to be maybe a little bit of an orangey color, We'll go up here as well so we can actually see what's going on. So just go to the viewport shading tab. We might even just turn up this a little bit. Maybe even to two. Ooh. And I might even just lift it up. Then I'm just going to add in a point light. I'm just going to place that in the back just about here. Just to give everything a little bit of a color. Just like that. And it just makes it a little bit more 3D. And then I might even do... A little area light up here. Pull it back, rotate it, and we're going to turn it into a disc like that. Press zero and we're just going to increase. Oh, that is way too much. Maybe to about 50. We're going to pull the sun up a little bit more. Now is the point where I usually go in and start rendering it to see what it looks like. Start playing around with the lighting, whatever vibe you're going for. I'm quite happy with this lighting, but I don't like that there's a big shadow, so I'm actually going to pull this down. Perhaps you can't actually see the shadow. So to render this one, we're rendering in EV. So we've already set up everything. So once you're done, you just need to go up here and click render and then click render image. And there it goes. There is your low poly little island. So I'm just going to finish off my one and then I'll show you what it looks like. This is what my low poly island is looking like rendered. I'm really excited to see what you've created and how you've used these tips and tricks to create your own low poly island. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will now see you in the next video.